Okay, so I came across this question, and I just wanted to talk about it um, in terms of perspective of why is the decimal representation of this number irrational, right? We're not going to get into the nature of this square root as to why it's irrational, but how, in other words, how can you tell when you write out the decimal approximation of this number that's going to be irrational? So let's just look at the square root of 7 and estimate it to 2.64. Five seven five one three one one, and we could go further. Now, of course, this dot 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 doesn't really mean anything here. Um, it's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to imply there's a pattern going on. I'm just saying there certainly is more. Um, and what we can tell in terms of looking at this decimal that it's irrational is that it will never terminate. Right? It will keep going on forever. So it it does not terminate. That's our first key. But that's not it, right? Because um, it's perfectly reasonable to have a fraction like one ninth, which equals 0 0.1111 and so forth. And that's rational because it has a repeating pattern. So in order for this thing to be irrational, it has to not terminate and not have any type of repeating pattern. That's the key. So, for example, if I, you know, a pattern itself is, is, could be irrational. For example, if I have the pattern 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and I'm counting up in this way, that's a pattern, but it's not repeating. Therefore, it's irrational. Same thing here. You can tell that this, this square root is irrational because it does not terminate and it does not, does not repeat. Um, and any single combination here, saying it does not terminate or saying it doesn't have a repeating pattern, is not enough. Both have to happen. Uh, as another example, right, we had one ninth with a repeating pattern that goes on forever, and that's rational. Remember, any decimal like one, two, three, one, one, here, let's say this decimal doesn't have a, an established repeating pattern, okay, but it terminates. So because this decimal ends or terminates at a certain digit, it, right, it terminates and therefore it's rational, right? So for, in order for it to be irrational, these two things must happen. Now when you're looking at square roots, a nice shortcut is that if the number inside the square root is a whole number, right? This only works when that number is a whole number. And you're taking the square root of it, right? And you find that it's between two numbers and you find some decimal, it's going to be irrational, right? And that's a nice little shortcut. But that only works, again, if you're working with the whole number. If you're taking, for example, the square root of, of 6.25, well, that's a decimal, right? And in fact, the answer is 2.5. So it's possible to get a decimal square root with a decimal answer that's rational, but when the number is a whole number, you're taking the square root, if the answer starts to work out to be a decimal, well, then it's going to be irrational. All right, thanks a lot.